Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Up The Guts podcast. Joining you as always is your host, Tricky. Now, I'm doing a solo episode this week. Unfortunately, the boys are busy, halted with an ex- uni exam and Connor with work. But I thought with round one coming up this week, which is exciting times, I thought, why don't I give out my season predictions and also my round one tips? Before I get into it, I'd just like to say, how good is it to have footy back? We've seen some practice matches going around. Even the local footy has got some practice matches going. And there's some local cricket going on as well. So uh, good luck to all the people playing in their finals for cricket. I believe some have already played their grand finals in some leagues. And I know the Casey Cardinal League have their grand final this week. So good luck to all the teams playing in that. And wish you all the best. As we get into, I'll give you my ladder prediction that I have for this season. So we'll start off from the bottom going down. In the 18th position, I have got the Hawthorne Football Club. Now, in 2022, they finished 13th and managed to get eight wins. The reason I've gone with them in the last position is, I think I've already mentioned this, but I think they're going in the right direction with the way they are cutting cutting the list, but their list is just too young, and I don't think it will match it with any of the teams coming up this year, so that's why I've got them in the 18th position. Now, the 17th and 16th position, I switched around in the last at the last minute, so in the 17th spot, I have got the West Coast Eagles. In 2022, they also finished 17th with two wins. And I don't see it changing much. After seeing some practice matches and the way that they've been training, all the reports, um, I don't see, see them making any improvement. So, yeah, but Ruben Gimby is one to look out for, I believe. I have predicted him maybe possibly even for a Rising Star nomination by all means He's tearing it up at preseason training, so interested to see how he goes this season. But then the 16th spot, I've got the Wooden Spooners of last year, North Melbourne Football Club. Obviously, so they got two wins last year, and with new close, new coach, sorry, Alistair Clarkson. They are going in the right direction with Alistair Clarkson, and I believe Luke Davies Uniac is ready to take the competition by storm. And they've got Nick Larkey up there, who's an absolute star. But I reckon this is Luke Daviak, Davies Uniac season to really cement himself as one of the top players in the competition. Now, in the 15th position, I've got the Essendon Football Club staying in the same spot as they did in 2022, where they managed seven wins. I just, after doing a preview early on, I just don't really rate their lists at all. They're really young, and I mean, there's probably there's some potential in some of the young players, but I just don't think they're coming up, and there's already questions over. Jake Stringer's not playing in round one uh, through injury. And he's come back questionable with his body shape, by all reports. And Anthony McDonald, Tip and Woody, by all means, it's a great story, him coming back. He just doesn't look in a great shape, but he'll still provide that spark that they need. So I reckon that'll be good. And I reckon Alan Davy Jr. is one to look out for, for SN. Now in the 14th spot, moving up two spots from the 2022 season, I have got the GWS Giants. Uh, new coach with Adam Kingsley. I I don't know. Just They're just losing too many players. And I feel like... Their time to win, a, to win a flag has already been, they should have won one in that 2016 to 2019 era and they just couldn't get it over the line. So I, I think they're in a rebuild phase, but I think Tom Green is going to have an outstanding year. He could be one we could be talking about, Brownlow, if it's not this year, in the next few years to come. And the 13th spot, moving down, I've got the St Kilda Football Club. Now we talk about St Kilda Football Club a lot on this channel. We just don't really rate them. They're, they're full of promises and they show signs sometimes but just don't deliver. And now with Max King going not been going to be playing the majority of the season or at least the first half of the season. And who was it? Sorry, Marcus Winhager also in the practice match. I believe breaking his hand will miss at least the first month. So that was They've just got a too long of an injury list so I don't think they will be anywhere near the eight. But they could prove me wrong. In the 12th position, I've got the Adelaide Football Club. A lot of talk about Adelaide this season. Uh, the way they've been training, they've picked up Isaac Rankin coming in there and they've elected a new, appointed, sorry, a new captain in Jordan Dawson, which was a bit of a shock to everyone. But we'll be interested to see how he goes and we'll see if, if that forward line can stay good. Uh, Isaac Rankin playing that high half forward role and you've got Darcy Fogarty who ended the season magnificently and he showed... Some real talent that everyone knew he had and started to put some consistent footy together. They could be something to look out for. Now, in 11th position, moving up one spot, I've got the Gold Coast Suns. In 2022, as I said, they finished uh, 12th with 10 wins. 
I think they're on the up. I really like the way they're looking. And now they've got Ben King back. That is so crucial to them. Obviously, they made it work last year with Chol and Casbol. I just don't think that would have been sustainable. But putting King in there is going to be really, really interesting. So I'm really excited to see how they can make that work. And if they play the three tools or if they're going to have to... They probably will play the three tools probably round one to see how it goes. But we're interested to see how that format changes throughout the year. In the 10th position, I've got the Port Adelaide Football Club. Port Adelaide just don't... Oh, they So they've picked up Jason Horn francis Yes, and all by all means, he's training the house down. But I just don't know about them. Like, they show so much. Like, maybe like Jerry West, they had their chance. And us. they could be one that surprises us and sneaks into the A. But personally, I don't think they will. And ninth position. From ninth to the top is where it could be any one, any one of these. It could So they say top eight for finals, but this could be a top nine, really. It's a really bold one, but I've actually gone the Western Bulldogs. So in 2022, they did play finals and finished eight for 12 wins. And I just don't know, but like, I feel like they will play finals. But at the same time, when I was going over this ladder, I just put it together and I couldn't figure out a team to move out for them. That was my only worry. Like I, It wouldn't surprise me if they are in the top eight at the end of the season, but I couldn't mount a case to push anyone, any of the other eight that are, or I'd already had in there out for them. Obviously, it's going to be interesting to watch how they play their four tools in Norton, Hugo Hagen, Darcy, and Lobb. Obviously, Lobb will probably pinch it a bit more in the ruck. And interesting to see because Tim English was is ready to go, I reckon. He had a really good season last year, even though it was injury interrupted. But I reckon he's really ready to go. Now, we go into top eight. Top eight, I've got the Fremantle Football Club. Fifth last year, and they swarmed in first half of the year, but they had a very disappointing second half of the year, I thought. So I think they'll be finishing eighth, and I, as you probably guys would know, I'm a very big Caleb Sarong fan, and I think he's going to take leaps in this. In the seventh position, now the, this one could be debatable. They will finish eighth, but they could finish top four. I've got the Richmond Tigers. Now, hear me out. 2022, they also finished 7th with 13 wins and one draw. But I think the hype, it could be wrong, but I think the hype around Hopper and Tirano is a bit much. Like, people talking about how their midfield could be the best in the game now. And I just don't see it. But they could easily finish top four. I think they're going to be a real threat, but I've put them in the 7th position. Now, in the 6th position, moving up three spots from 2022, I've got the Carlton Football Club. They had 12 wins last year and by all means should have played finals the way they were playing, but they just ch- coughed it up again. But this year has to be the year. Uh, with with the two, they've got the arguably the two best key forwards in the league and they've got the reigning Brownlow medalists in Patrick Cripps. So it'll be interesting to see how they go. And I think this is the year they swarm their way into the finals. In the fifth spot, I've got my beloved Collingwood Magpies. Collingwood made... Huge progress last year under Craig McRae with finishing fourth with 16 wins. And I believe it was 10 close games they won by under double figures or under a goal. I just, I'm really interested to see how it goes. I, I like our pickups. I like the Dan McStay pickup. I believe he's going to help Brody Mychek because Brody Mychek's only six foot two. So in any other team, he'd be playing as a third tall. So Dan McStay coming in is going to help that. I think Billy Frampton, if. Look, I like him, but I know why people have a lot of knock on him. But I think he'll help our key backs down there. And the Darcy Moore appointment of a captain was brilliant. I think he's got leadership written all over him. I've said it for a good two years now. And Bobby Hill is just going to provide that real good run. Obviously, a bit disappointing for Pat Lipinski, who went down in the practice match and will miss, I believe, over the first half. It might have been six weeks. Yeah, and he had a really good season after coming over from the Western Bulldogs last year. So that was a bit of a disappointment. But And Tom Mitchell is going to really help our midfield with where we lacked last year was the clearance and the contested ball game was where we really lacked. And that is Tom Mitchell's specialty. You can give it out to the likes of the gully who looks ready to go. Now we go to the top four. In the fourth spot, I've got one of the grand finalists from last year. I've got the Sydney Swans. Now, they had a really good year last year. Very disappointing how they played in the grand final. The only one who really turned up was Chad Warner, who is a star, may I add. 
but I don't see them going anywhere. Really, look at their list. They're still only young. They probably pegged a little early and still look what they did then. But I reckon they're still going to be in that top four. They're going to be a right around that mark. In third spot, I've got the reigning premiers, the Geelong Football Club. They finished first last year with the 18 wins, and obviously the reigning premiers, obviously Joel Salwood retiring and Patrick Danefield being named as the new captain. They brought in Jack Bowes and Ollie Henry, who will help them a fair bit, I think. I don't know where Jack Bowes sits because rumours was in that trade period he was coming over to try and find a spot in the midfield, but I just don't see how he fits in that midfield. He played... People didn't know who he was, but I remember two or three years ago, he played some really good footy off the half-back line for Gold Coast. And then, I don't know if he just fell out of favour or he had an injury, and then when coming back, he fell out of favour after that injury or what, because he just went missing and wasn't getting played. And I, I myself was confused. So, yeah, but then here's the top two. In the second spot, I've got the Melbourne Football Club. They finished second last year, and could this be another premiership for them? It possibly could be. How are they going to make the Gordon? How they make the Gordon Grundy uh, combination work? I don't know, but it obviously worked in the practice game. By all means, a practice game. I know they kicked six goals between them, but it'll be interesting to see how that work. And Lockie Hunter um, coming in there off that wing, providing them really good ball use, which is really what they lacked probably last year. Um, Some ball use, like Christian Petrarch and Clayton Oliver, magnificent players, but they probably lack a little bit with their ball use. Lockie Hunter provides that class on on the outside. And they've also picked up Josh Shackey. Now that leaves top, and I believe could be premiers. I've got the Brisbane Lions, who last year finished sticks. With the pickup of Josh Dunkley, I think that is huge. Josh Dunkley provides, um, sorry, Takes the workload off of Lockie Neal and helps him out a bit. Like just listen to this. McCluggage, Neal, Dunkley. That is enormous. And that's not even mentioning Ashcroft, who is going to come on and he's going to have a, a, a Nick Dacos-like season, I reckon. So I think Brisbane will finish on top. And I think it could be a Brisbane... It's going to be a Brisbane-Melbourne or a Brisbane-Geelong grand final. And I think Brisbane are going to win it. So yeah, that's my tip for... That's my position. So we'll just go over it again. We went Brisbane, Melbourne, Geelong, Sydney, Collingwood, Carlton, Richmond, Fremantle, Western Bulldogs, Port Adelaide, Gold Coast, Adelaide, St Kilda, GWS, Essendon, North Melbourne, West Coast, and Hawthorne. And I've got Brisbane and Melbourne playing it out in the grand final. For Brisbane taking the win, and I think the Norm Smith medal will go to Lockie Neal. He'll have a day out. He'll have about 35. He might kick a goal. But yeah, I've got them winning that. Uh, Brownlow, I've said this previous in episodes, but he was pretty stiff um, last year. Not stiff, but I know he he came, I think he was either equal second or equal third he came, but I think this is the year Took Miller wins the Brownlow. His work rate is insane, and he can play both ways, can play attacking, can play defending, and he just runs and runs and runs. He's a star, and he's one that holds up that Gold Coast midfield. By all means, Noah Anderson is ready to go too, and hopefully Matt Rowell can find some form again. Uh, Coleman medalist, I have got, I'm going to go Charlie Kerno again, I think. Yeah, I'm going to go Charlie Kerno again. I tossed I tossed up, tossed and turned between them, Charlie Kerno and someone else. It's left my head right now, but I think I'm going to go Charlie Kerno again. Uh, surprise All-Australian, I'm going to fr- I'm gonna float out. Oh, what's his, uh, just left me, sorry. Surprise All-Australian, I'm going to float out. Oh, who was I going to say? Ed Riches off the halfback flank. I really like him off that halfback line, so I reckon Ed Richards could be a smoky for an All-Australian off the halfback line. Now, as we move in, so obviously if, um, move into there as I grab my phone. Uh, and we will now preview round one. So Thursday night, as Liz, this will come out on a Thursday morning, uh, Thursday morning before the first game of round one. You obviously got the what played every year, Richmond and Carlton. And I think, ooh, I don't know with this one. This could be a really, really, really tight game. So I think I'm going to go Carlton. I think either Kerno and Mackay are going to have a day out down there and Cripps is going to really get off the leash. But... 
It could go either way. And then Friday night, you've got mine and Hulk tears, Collingwood and Geelong. Uh, I'm not going to be biased here. I think Geelong gets this. Not, uh, I don't want to say done easily, but, yeah, I think I think Geelong do get it done. They're just too good. So I just think Geelong gets it done. And then we move on to the Saturday games. Uh, the first Saturday game we've got is North Melbourne versus West Coast. Jeez, what a blockbuster that one is. <laughs> Um, I've got North winning that one over at Marvel under Alistair Clarkson. Um, yeah, I think um, North get that done under Alistair Clarkson and they make some moves early and, yeah, I just don't rate West Coast. Uh, next next one I have got, we have got is Port Adelaide v Brisbane. Uh, I'm going to go, whew, is that the Adelaide Oval? But I'm still going to back Brisbane, I think. I think they are a real shot for the flag. As I said, I pi- I've picked them for the flag. Um, Yeah, I've picked them for the flag. And, yeah, so I think Brisbane gets that done pretty comfortably. Melbourne Bulldogs, this could be an interesting game, but I honestly think Melbourne get this d- done by oh, five to six goals. I just don't see... Oh, oh. It's, I just don't see how the forward pools work, and I'm still interested to see how this Grundy and Gorn goes up against English. And the round after Saturday games, we have got Gold Coast v Sydney. I am going to go with Sydney. I still think they're going to be around that mark again, even though after that disappointing grand final performance, they're still too good to not be around the mark. In the Sunday games, we have got GWS and the Adelaide Crows. I am going to go with the GWS Giants over at home. I know I've hyped up Adelaide and everyone else has hyped up Adelaide, but I'm going to back GWS at home first. I could be wrong with that one. Uh, Hawthorne Essen. This could be a really interesting game, actually. I'm going to back the Bombers. Not co- not confidently, but I'm going to back the Bombers. I just think Hawks are too young and too inexperienced. In the last game for the week, we have got St. Kilda v Fremantle. I am going to back... I'm going to back... Ooh, this is actually an interesting one, actually. No, I'm going to back the Frio Dockers. Uh, over, even though it's over here at Marvel, I just know Max King and um, numerous other injuries. Their injury list is just too long saying killed us, so I just don't think they can get it done. But yeah, that's pretty much just wraps up the preview of the round coming up and the episode. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Sorry about this short one, but it's what we uh, could only get done, so I just thought I'd smash out an episode for you. Nice and short and sweet to get it done and yeah tune in for next week where all the boys are definitely going to be back so we can talk about the round one and can't wait for thursday night how good is it footy to be back see you next week guys cheers